In this video, I'll take students through Work Together 4-3. We'll do financial statements um, from numbers 3 and 4. So we've got to do the balance sheet first. Calculate and record, verti record the vertical analysis ratios for each item in the third column of the statement. So we'll scroll over here to our balance sheet. And I kind of did a nice thing here for you and gave you gray squares where you need to fill in amounts. Um, whereas you may not have that the whole way through this chapter. Okay, but first one, cash. We will find it from our adjusted trial balance for cash, 34,460. Um, Petty cash was right below it, so we'll just drag that down. Uh, let's do our accounts receivable, you know, so I don't have to keep dragging over. Maybe I'll move that. 23,000. I'm just going to move our adjusted trial balance over here closer to our balance sheet so I don't have to scroll over so far. Okay. Allowance for doubtful account or uncollectible, sorry, accounts. And that would be here, 210123. So we would just subtract those to get our net amount of accounts receivable. And merchandise inventory for kitchen. That would be here, 147084. And then bath was listed right below it, 97671. We've got supplies of 1950, prepaid insurance, then office of coins. Okay, supplies, and then prepaid insurance. Perfect. Oops, I got rid of my bottom border there. There we go. So what are the total current assets? We'll just add those all together. Three oh four eight eighty four forty four. Current assets mean they're available to you. Um, you could turn them into cash pretty darn quick if you needed to, right? So that's done. Now our plant assets, we've got office equipment. So we'll find that from our trial balance. Here it is, 26015. And then our accumulated depreciation on the office equipment. Could be here, 18,674. So that is a calculation. To find the net amount, we'll subtract 734189 portion of the office equipment that has not been depreciated. Okay, store equipment is 51852. And the accumulated depreciation on our store equipment is here, 36255. And again, we'll just subtract the net amount of store equipment, 159782. And what are the total of plant assets? We'll just add them together. 22,939.71. Okay, so our total assets would be our current assets plus our plant assets in this problem. 327,824.15. Okay, so total assets are 100%. What are the plant assets as a percentage of total? They are 7%. And current assets as a percentage of total assets are 93%. Okay, asset section is completed. And then we find out if our liabilities plus our equity will equal our assets. So this number here, total assets, better be the same as total liabilities and stockholders' equity. Hence the name of this statement, balance. They've got to balance each other, balance sheet. Okay, so accounts payable. 
go back to our trial balance, accounts payable, and that's 24,116. And are these all in order? Sales tax, employee income tax, social security, Medicare. Let's just check and see if the order is the same. It sure looks like it. So let's just drag that down all the way through dividends payable, 4,000. Oh, we lost our bottom border. We'll put it back. So our total liabilities, because there were not like current and long term, it looks like we just have current um, in this problem. So 42,178.75. It is possible that there would be another section here for long-term liabilities, and then you'd need to add them together, similar to how we did add our plant to our current assets, okay? But this problem, there's only current liabilities. So our total liabilities are here, 42,178.75. Okay, capital stock. We should be able to find this right off of our statement of stockholders' equity. And it's here, our balance of capital stock, 75,000. And now our balance in retained earnings, same thing. We should be able to get it here. The end of the year retained earnings, 210,645. So our total stockholders equity, we add those together, 285,645,40. That really should balance this number here, and it does. And so our total liabilities plus stockholders' equity, we just add them together. 327, 824, 15. 327, 824, 15 total assets. Our balance sheet balances, so that's a good thing. Okay, 100% would be our total liabilities and stockholders' equity. What is the equity as a percentage of that total? Oops, I think I did my formula wrong equals, I did, <laughs> oops, equals this amount divided by oops, total talk, stockholders equity divided by total liabilities, 87% equity, and 42 divided by 327, 12.9% debt for total liabilities. I believe we are done with our balance sheet. So the last one we've got to do here is statement of cash flows. Okay, so let's look back at our instructions quickly. And we got cash received from all of these things, cash payments for these. Okay, I'm going to um, look at this page from my textbook as I complete the problem. So I'm probably not gonna scroll back here again, but um, it is on page 116. Okay, so our book tells us, page 116, cash receipts from customers are 697-01861. And then it gives us a whole list of cash payments and those were for inven. Wait, do we have here? Um, insurance. Oh wait, dividends. Yeah, but we wouldn't put that. Okay, let's go with insurance and inventory purchases and. Salaries, let's see. Other operating expenses. Oh, we really should put these in order of amount. Okay, so this is a little bit trickier than I was thinking. Okay. In order of amount, it looks like inventory purchases is the biggest. And it was 309. 481.36. The next largest would be salaries and wages. 
and that amount was 231,648,69. And then the third one would be rent at 18,000. And then insurance at 16,000. Income taxes. Bend this over a little. And those were fourteen oh forty-eight seventeen. And other should always go last, right? Other operating expenses. And that was thirty-seven one oh four seven four. So our total cash payments there would be a sum of those amounts, 626, 282.96. And so we will just subtract net cash provided or used by operating activities. And since we calculated here, we'll put a bottom border, both of those places. Seventy thousand seven thirty-five sixty-five net cash provided. Okay, how cash flows from investing activities? We have sales of equipment, and the amount our book gives us for that is thirty-one eighty. And then we also have um, purchase of equipment. And since we purchased, that would be a negative number, right? So we spent cash on that, 24,830. So net cash provided or used by investing activities, we will calculate equals this um, plus that. Right, so we used 21,650. So cash flows from financing activities. What did we have going on here? It looks like we had issuance of stock. And we know that we had a, a thousand shares at a dollar par value from our last problem. And we created our um, statement of stockholders equity. We also have payment of cash dividends. And that amount given by our book is 16000 And so net cash provided or used by financing activities. We will add them together. Oh, well, actually, we, won't. we will subtract the 16000 from the 1000 right? Okay. So we used $15,000. So... Our net change in cash, we will calculate here, is the sum of all three of these things. 3408565. So that is our net change in cash. So our cash balance from January 1st, according to our book, uh, the problem on page 116, of course, is 375.14. Now we will just add those two together to find our ending balance. 34,460.79. Uh, that better equal what we had in our trial balance. 34,460.79. It does. So our statement of cash flows is complete. We'll go double bottom border underline to show that. So in this video, we completed our balance sheet and our statement of cash flows. So that's it.